Hi, quick video here. So I got a message on YouTube and it says, Hey, been watching your channel for a long time now. Great stuff. Your vids have been really inspiring for me on my transition to eating 100% raw foods. So thanks for that. I have a question that I'm asking a lot of raw foodies just to get some different opinions on the subject and was hoping you could share yours with me. What are your thoughts on greens? And then it goes on. Um, so basically let's talk about all fruit diets, um, because this is something I've been interested in for a while and I've even asked Doug Graham about it because I was curious. Um, the first thing we need to get clear is what we're calling a fruit and what we're calling a vegetable. Um, so Doug considers tomatoes, zucchini, cucumbers to be vegetables as far as his diet's concerned and he's recommending, you know, one to two pounds of vegetables a night. Um, and, uh, so we're going to consider those vegetables, uh, in this product because they have different nutrient profiles than your sweet fruits. Um, and so are there people in the world living on only sweet fruits? There are some that are really close, but I don't think anybody, I don't know anybody who does it entirely. Um, Ann Osborne is really close to doing that, but she's also living in, um, one of the best places you can live in to get tropical fruits, which are the best at meeting our nutrient needs, like sufficiently better, significantly better. Um, my friend John Slater has uh, talked to me about um, what happens when he puts in all the watermelon he's eating to chronometer, and it's much better at meeting his nutrient needs than the subtropical fruits. Um, do I believe we're meant to live on 100% fruit? I absolutely do. Or if it's not 100%, I think it's really, really close. Um, it's possible, you know, we'd eat our bananas and reach down and pick a stalk of celery and eat that. But eating one to two pounds of greens a night, I just don't see that as likely. Um, something I do um, to make up for the nutrient insufficient fruit I'm eating is I take the daily green boost. And that's a way of getting in some more nutrients and some more like saltiness and like different tones that I'm not getting from like Cavendish banana. Because the your fruit is grown mostly for sugar content and size, and it's not grown for nutrition. Um, so if you're, you know, in somewhere cold and you're just eating bananas and dates most of the time, eventually you're going to run into nutrient problems. And I'm not even saying the Daily Green Boost is a good enough solution. Like you know, eating bananas and dates and daily green boost in your banana smoothie and, you know, some lettuce. I don't think that's adequate. And that's partly because, um, it just doesn't really represent what we're designed to eat. Like some of my friends post pictures of like these incredible, like, um, tropical fruit gatherings from like, you know, some jungle in Ecuador and the fruit is so vibrant. Um, it's got a totally different feel, it's got incredible colors, and you know that that means it has an array of phytonutrients. Um, the soils there, they're not depleted like they are in most of our modern agriculture. Um, but, so, you know, the way, of course, that a lot of raw foodists recommend you deal with that is by eating more green. So, you, you bring more lettuce and romaine lettuce to add to your bananas and dates and somehow that, you know, helps you uh, get the nutrients you need. But the problem is that the vegetables were grown in the same nutrient insufficient soil as your fruit or similar soils. So you're still missing all these trace minerals, etc. Um, so that's why I think the Daily Green Boost is really important. And when I was living in Oregon eating mostly bananas, I added the Daily Green Boost into my banana smoothie and I felt maybe two and a half times better than I did before. And I did the experiment where I'd eat it for like two weeks and then I wouldn't eat it for one week and then I'd go like binge on Dulce or something, which does not feel good. So I highly recommend the Daily Green Boost if you buy it in bulk um, and use two tablespoons a day, which is a good amount. Um, it's only going to cost you a buck forty per day, so that's what I recommend there. If you don't feel like eating the crappy vegetables in the supermarket in the middle of California, um, I wouldn't worry about it. When I was in Salem, Oregon, I did the same thing. 
didn't eat like any vegetables through winter because they're absolute crap. And um, then I went to Hawaii and I still didn't feel nutrient sufficient eating that fruit, which wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. And um, then I you know, started eating salads and stuff and I don't feel as good doing that as I do just fruit. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't let your friends scare you, but it is important that you understand that you're not going to meet your nutrient needs eating just fruit. So eventually you're going to have to find some way to get all the minerals your body needs and the Daily Green Boost can help you do that. Um, also when you can get really good quality vegetables, it might be worth eating a little bit. That's kind of what I do. So I'm eating mostly imported fruits right now in San Francisco. I'm eating Malmo banana, jackfruit, a top from mango, durian, coconuts. Um, and they're good at meeting my needs in some ways, in some ways they're not. So I might go to the farmer's market and get a really nice head of organic lettuce or celery. And I'll just eat a little bit of it every night. I might take the daily green boost if I'm feeling in the mood for it. Um, but I just do whatever feels best to you. You just have to be aware that the fruits you are eating are not going to meet your nutrient needs. And eating bananas and romaine lettuce like your friends are recommending, in my opinion, that's not going to meet your needs either. Um, so I hope that answers your question. And um, good luck. Stay fruity. Bye.